The truth is, the fastest way to get a girl to lose attraction to you is to act depressed and sad around her. There it is. I said it. I know you're not supposed to say that, but it's true. When you act depressed and sad around somebody, it's clear that you have a problem and you need to solve this problem. But if you have not solved this problem yourself, the person that you're talking to or even the person you're dating is going to think that you're incomplete. And when you're incomplete, it basically means you're not ready. Let's say that you're healthy. Wouldn't you want to date somebody that is also healthy? Why would you want to date somebody that's unhealthy? There's a chance that if you date somebody that's unhealthy, that person's going to also make you unhealthy. Think about when you're in high school, what your parents tell you. Don't hang out with bad kids. Don't drink. Don't do substances. Don't do all of these things. Why? Because they know that if you hang out with people that do this kind of thing, it's much more likely that you turn out a loser because losers hang out with other losers. And I'm not saying that if you're depressed, you're a loser. But what I'm saying is, if you are depressed, you actually need to work on yourself, not rely on somebody else to be accepting of you the way you are. And I know that that's tough to say, right? If you're depressed, I'm sure that you could find a woman that's depressed and the two of you can be depressed together. But the point I'm making is depression is just a temporary state. It's not something that you are stuck in forever. It is not something that you can just ignore and it goes away. It is something you need to deal with. And women unconsciously know that they can kind of sense when somebody does not have it all together. They can sniff it out. They can smell it on you, right? They just know through millions of years of evolution how to be around winners. People love winners. People do not like losers. But guess what? If you're a loser, that doesn't mean you can't win. It just means you're not trying to win. It just means you're not winning right now. And maybe you have to lose a bunch of times before you actually do win and succeed. But that is the price of winning. And most people are not willing to do that. And that is why they will never win. So if you are in a position right now where you are depressed, it basically just means you need to do some work on yourself. You're not ready yet. There could be a test tomorrow and you might fail because you're not ready. I mean, sure, maybe you get lucky, but eventually it's not going to work out. They're going to struggle with following good habits. They're probably not eating the best food. They're probably not exercising regularly. They might not necessarily be successful in their career. Maybe they're working a minimum wage job. They don't like what they do. These are all major problems that need to be solved before actually getting into a relationship because you can't solve depression by simply getting into a relationship. And I know that's tough love. Again, I'm trying to be polite with this video, but it's basically like putting a temporary fix on something that's still broken. When you have a hole in the boat, you don't just put duct tape on it and expect it to not sink. What you need to do is one, probably get in the water out in a life jacket and literally get saved by somebody. So again, that's where friends come in. That's where a therapist comes in. That's where family comes in. But then you actually weld the hole in the boat shut and you prevent a hole from getting there in the first place by reinforcing the material. You can't just slap duct tape over it. And that's the kind of way people are looking at things lately. They think, oh, I'm depressed. Well, you know what? Then I'll just get a girlfriend and then I'll be happy. No, now you're a depressed person that is coping. Think about people that do substances. Why do they do substances? I don't know if you've ever done a substance, but basically what they do is they make you feel good. And when you feel good, you don't have pain anymore. And when you don't have pain anymore, you don't necessarily have to deal with all the problems in your life because you're just feeling euphoria. But the thing is, you didn't necessarily earn that euphoria. You didn't earn that good feeling. It's just a temporary thing that's being introduced into your body artificially. And another example of this would be junk food or watching internet videos or scrolling on your phone or just watching content all day. What you're doing is you're numbing yourself because you're in pain. And unfortunately, people also do this when they get into relationships. Why? Because love and intimacy feels amazing. I know what it's like to be in a bad position. I know what it's like to be depressed. And a lot of the ways that I got out of that was by being around people that treated me good. The thing is that the only people that actually really care about you are your family or your close friends. If a therapist really cared about you, then they wouldn't be charging you hundreds of dollars an hour now, would they, right? Because when you really think about it, who actually cares about you? I don't mean to go deep here, but like, Unless you're contributing value to society as a man, nobody cares. Nobody cares about men. 
besides maybe your mom and dad, maybe your siblings, and maybe a couple close friends. Besides that, it's like, bro, you need to figure your life out. You need to become successful. You need to perform. There's no room for ruminating and being like a victim. You can't be a victim or you're never gonna be successful. And what I've noticed a lot lately is these guys talking so much about how hard it is to be successful dating. And it's like, okay, well, that's one way to look at it. Talk about how hard it is. Or why don't you actually fix the problem? Women are never going to just randomly decide that they like guys that don't believe in themselves. They're never going to all of a sudden decide that they're attracted to men that are sad and depressed. Okay. You may notice that a lot of people that are actually depressed, what they do is they get into a relationship so that they do feel better about themselves. So you're basically like having a big hole inside of you and you're filling it by getting into a relationship. Now, does that make sense at all? Does that actually fix your problem? No, of course not. What you're doing is you're running away from your problem and you're avoiding it. This is something that's really sad because it happens a lot with men in their mid to late 20s and their early 30s. You have so much potential, but you just would rather feel comfortable. You'd rather feel loved and you'd rather just settle down into a relationship. And the compromise is maybe you really wanted to be an an entrepreneur. Maybe you really wanted to be a musician. Maybe you really wanted to be an athlete. Whatever it is, you feel like you want to do something else and you have time, you have resources, you have energy. It's challenging and difficult, but this is your shot. And then a woman comes into your life and all of a sudden, all that pain goes away. All that ambition, all that drive, all that motivation to improve, boom, it's gone. Why? because now you have a girlfriend. You have somebody that hugs you and tells you it's gonna be okay. And you get that same nice intimacy that you get from your mother. And obviously it's a little different, but we're raised to be loved by women in our life. So we are very receptive to being nurtured and cared for by feminine women. So I know a lot of guys aren't gonna to want to admit this, but yeah, it feels great to be loved and cared for by a woman, obviously. But what I'm getting at is when you are depressed, not only are you gonna be not in a position where you should be dating women, but you're also gonna be turning them off because women don't want guys that have problems. They want somebody that already has their problems solved. A great way to look at this is they wait at the finish line and meet the winners. They don't care if you're running slower than everybody else. They don't care if you tripped and you hurt your knee. They just want results, okay? They just want the end product. When you go to a restaurant and they bring out food that's cold and the french fries aren't properly cooked and the burger tastes awful and they're like yeah sorry the cook is depressed so you know just eat it as it is the cook's depressed so i'm still going to charge you the same amount of money but you know it's it's okay the, the the chef's depressed. It's 40 minutes late because I'm depressed. Okay, no, you're gonna be like, this is the worst restaurant ever. I'm never eating here again. This is awful, this food sucks. I know that's an extreme analogy, but what I'm getting at is like, you need to realize that at the end of the day, it comes down to market economics. There is a certain supply and demand. And if you do not meet the proper criteria, then it is considered inadequate and they're just not interested. People have their own problems, all right? You can't save every homeless person. You can't save every baby whale. You can't save the Amazon rainforest until you actually save yourself, okay? And women know this. They love to see a confident, happy, thriving man because that is the real version of you. Depression is not some inherent thing that you just are. It is something that casts over you. It's like a spell. It's like when you are sick, you're not yourself. You're at like 60%. Your body's not functioning properly. That's what depression is. It's like getting sick temporarily, but then you get better. And when you are yourself, you feel 100%. And that is the real version of you. But until women can see the real version of you, they're not gonna be interested. I mean, maybe they're interested in the 50% version of you because because you're so dope that even a depressed, not that great version of you is still better than most other men. But why take the chance? Why not just be the best version of yourself? I know so many guys that I've worked with over the years in my socializer community that come in and they have all this trauma, they got out of a bad breakup or a relationship, but then they actually started working on themselves. They started implementing my strategies instead of just relying on dating apps or like whales at the club at 2 a.m. They actually were able to go out approach women in real life, be charismatic, be funny, have a great conversation and attract women that they've never been able to before. And now they're going on dates with women that they considered way out of their league just a couple of years ago. But guess what? The reason they're able to do that now is one, they're in my community, which is unreal. And I have hours of video courses. I have one-on-one -on -one direct calls each week where you could join and ask me questions in a Q and A. 
but also because they now are at a higher level and they can get better results because of it. If you're like at 50% capacity, you're not gonna be able to get a woman that's at her 100%. You're gonna either get a woman that's at 50% or a woman that's just a 50 to begin with, right? If you are mentally a five out of 10 right now, you're gonna attract a five out of 10. You know what I mean? Now I'm gonna say this as well, which is very offensive, but whatever. At this point, you already understand my way of communicating. I'm here to help you. It's out of love. There are bigger problems in the world than your hurt feelings. I know it's offensive to say, but you are actually not that big a deal in the grand scheme of things, especially when you are sad. Sad men do not contribute value. Sad men do not work efficiently. Usually they do not work at all. And when you cannot work, you cannot contribute value to society. And if you cannot contribute value to society, why do you expect anything in return? Think about it, bro. Why would you just expect everybody in the world to treat you amazing, give you stuff, and allow you to live in a nice house that costs a lot of money when you contribute no value whatsoever? Why do you think people show up to work every day? Because they feel like it? No, it's because they need to earn money. And when they earn money, they can pay for things. They can pay for the lifestyle that they want and eventually work towards a situation where they actually enjoy what they do for a living. And it's the same thing with dating. If you're not valuable, if you're not contributing to society, then you're actually dragging society down with you. And I gotta be very careful with how I use my words here, but it's okay to be in this position. I don't want you to think that you're always gonna be dragging everybody down because I've been in that situation too, where I feel like I'm a burden I feel like I'm useless and I may as well do everybody a favor and just self delete and all that. But the truth is you actually have so much potential to really help other people out. And there's gonna be a certain point in your life, maybe it's right now you realize this, but life isn't actually about you. It's about everybody else. And when you're depressed, you can't help anybody else. So that's why it's so important for you to fix yourself. When you fly on a plane, there's a flight attendant. And at the beginning of the flight, before it takes off, she goes over all the safety instructions to tell you how to react if there's some kind of emergency. And one of the things she teaches everybody how to do is to put a mask on just in case there's an issue with the oxygen on the plane. But what they also tell you to do is to not try and put a mask on anybody else until you first put your own mask on. Because if you try to put a mask on somebody else, you're actually not gonna get the oxygen you need and you're gonna die. And then you can't put the mask on anybody else because you're dead. So you need to save yourself before you save others. This is what I'm getting at. And when you're depressed, you just can't be contributing value. This is just an unfortunate part of life, especially as a man. As men, we are only as good as the work we do. So if you cannot do work, you are no good to society. And in this case, you are no good to women. Now, this doesn't mean you're not a good person. You could have the best intentions in the world. Trust me, I had the best intentions in the world when I was feeling down like this. The other issue is that you might be trying to do the wrong thing. Maybe whatever it is you're doing right now isn't working because it's the wrong thing. When a lot of people are going through pain in their life, they think it's because of one thing, but it's actually the other. For example, do you actually enjoy your job? Maybe you're hanging out with people that are really limiting you. They're telling you bad things. You're doing bad habits like scrolling on your phone every day. Bro, take the most confident guy in the world and have him live the same life you do. I'm sure he'd be in the same position as you. But what if you did all of the same things that the most confident guy in the world did? You'd probably be the most confident guy in the world. So it's not a matter of you like being born this way or stuck in the situation. It's a matter of finding out the things that successful people do. Finding out the things that make you less depressed, such as exercise, good habits, meditation, journaling, talking to people, finding a sense of purpose, but also doing things that you don't want to anyways. Because one of the things with depression is you don't wanna do anything. Well, what if I told you that you don't have to wanna do it to do it? You can still do stuff that makes you feel good even if you don't feel good, right? Science has actually shown that on average, it takes somebody five to 10 minutes of actually doing something before they start enjoying it. So just because you don't feel good during those five to 10 minutes doesn't mean afterwards you're not gonna feel good. Right now, you might not feel good, but trust me, bro, you will feel better.
Now let's talk about what women are actually attracted to. Women are attracted to leaders. Jordan Peterson once said, be the person that others turn to in times of crisis. So for example, let's say there's some kind of emergency. Let's say there's some kind of situation where somebody needs to step up and take control of the situation. Everybody in human history has always adored leaders. Think about every positive role model that you've ever heard about your entire life. They're always a leader. They're always somebody that is able to do things that are a little bit uncomfortable. Like for example, if you like a comedian, they have to be able to get up on stage and talk in front of a bunch of people. And all the people that are unable to do that, nobody cares about them. Nobody remembers them. And I'm not saying that if you're not a stand-up comedian, nobody's ever gonna care about you or remember you, but it's very clear what you need to become in order to be attractive, right? And this isn't just about like getting women, it's like getting respect from others. If you're able to be a leader, then you have way more job opportunities. You're way more likely to get promoted. You're way more likely to get paid more money and you're way more likely to have more friends. Imagine being stuck in a situation where you have to hang out with the same friends your entire life, even if you don't like them. Why? Because you haven't been able to take enough responsibility to become a leader yourself and make your own friends that you actually enjoy spending time with. Same thing with a job that you really wanna do. If you have a job right now and you don't like it, you need to be a leader and proactively find a different job or work that job and then learn a new skill or a side hustle or a passion project on the side until it's successful enough that you can switch over from your job. Every successful person in life has been in the same position as you. Lonely, depressed, scrolling online, looking for answers. And then they get through that stage and they're successful. So if you're in this position right now, it just means that you haven't made it to the next thing yet. Before you become successful, you have to go through this stage right now. And it just so happens that you're in this stage. But why stick around longer than you need to? What if I told you there's ways to get out of this? What if I told you you don't have to stay here for the rest of your life? You can actually get out of it. Now, as far as what kind of effect depression has on the body, it's kind of like being sick. It's kind of like being distracted. If you're hung up on something, it means that you're no longer sharp. And this is a pretty dramatic example, but there's a storyline in Breaking Bad where one of the characters moves into an apartment and the next door neighbor is a woman that used to have a substance abuse problem. And he currently has that same problem. So she relapses and starts doing substances with him. And because of it, she ends up overdosing. Very sad. And her father was so cautious to make sure that she didn't relapse and she stayed clean. And then when she did end up overdosing and dying, it absolutely destroyed him. And his job, was a traffic controller for an airport. And these are the guys that basically make sure that all the planes are flying without hitting each other. And since he was absolutely devastated and destroyed and very depressed, he was unable to do his job properly and he caused a major air accident. It's like when you're super emotional, you do stupid things. You punch a hole in the wall or you drink a bunch of alcohol. You get in your car, you drive, you crash. These are all very dumb things that we do when we're not at our best, we're not sharp. And these are extreme examples, but when you are not sharp, or at the very least you do not appear sharp, then it means you're not at the best that you could be. Even if you're still equally competent as a leader, let's say you're still a great leader, even if you are an alcoholic, it's not sustainable, it's not gonna last long term. And if other people get some kind of feeling or sense of doubt about you or uncertainty from you. Don't take it personally. It's just like, hey, I would rather be with somebody else, okay? There are people out there that are not depressed. There are people out there that were depressed and now they're not. I would rather be with them than somebody that's still figuring it out. It's like when you apply for a job, right? Hey kid, you got potential. You're not quite there yet, but when you do this, come back to me. Once you graduate school, come back to me. Apply again in a couple months when you're ready. But when you're depressed, you're not ready. That's the point I'm making. People need to have certainty from you. Now, if you already are in a relationship, like, yo, it's just a spider, yo, it's cool, relax. But to her, it may as well be the scariest, biggest thing ever. And what are you gonna do? Expect her to just become a man and not be afraid of the spider? No, of course not, right? And I know that's a big generalization. I'm sure there's women out here that are not afraid of spiders. 
But you know what I mean? It's just one of those things that shows the difference between men and women. And yeah, men and women just have different roles. Men are meant to be the ones that are more logical. Women are meant to be the ones that are more emotional. Now here's actually the upside of being depressed, especially if you're talented. You could be depressed and then stop being depressed, but like, hey, you got a job or you started a business or you just started working out, whatever. But some people, when they're depressed and they're talented, they end up creating some of the greatest art in the world. Think about how many amazing songs were written by dudes that just went through a heartbreak. They were so depressed. They were like absolutely destroyed inside. And the only way that they could get that love and intimacy from others is by creating art. That's one of the most beautiful things in the world about depression. You can use it to channel your energy into something great. It could be art. It could be transforming yourself. It could be helping other people. Cause I guarantee if you're depressed right now, it might be because you're not helping anybody else. If you are depressed, but you go down to the homeless shelter and you start helping guys by serving them soup and giving them clothes and volunteering, I guarantee you're gonna feel way better because you're gonna get this perspective of like how good your life actually is. And I know that sounds a little bit like, you know, minimizing the trauma or issues you're going through. But my point is every great song, every great piece of art came from somebody that was probably moody and depressed. Musicians, actors, comedians, even YouTubers. Most of us come from very traumatic lives. We come from a lot of pain. We were depressed and we wanted to do something different. And that is what pushed us into what we're doing now. Most innovation, most entrepreneurship in general is derived from a state of pain and anxiety. Think about all the people that had a family member pass away from some kind of disease or illness. So their entire life's work was finding a way to cure this disease and cure this illness so that less people die. That is what purpose is. And for some, it's literally being a scientist and finding it. For others, it's becoming a police officer or a firefighter or like Batman, right? What happened to Batman? He was a kid and he saw his parents get obliterated by some dude in an alleyway that was like a criminal. And now his whole life purpose is dedicated to busting criminals so that other people don't get killed the same way his family has. So you can absolutely use this depression and anxiety you have right now in a much more positive way than it would be to just simply get into a relationship and not actually solve your problem or even worse, just be online and complain. Like you have no right to just go on your computer all day and continue being depressed when you could actually use that depression to change your life and fix everything and become a better person. You know, why are you letting this behavior from yourself continue? Why are you tolerating this bullshit that you're justifying, you know, being in pain all the time? You know what you need to do and you know why you should be doing it. So stop letting yourself continuously get distracted from fixing your actual problem. Now, the beautiful thing about when you are depressed is that when you do get out of it, you have such a great appreciation for everything around you because you know the struggle, you know, the painful times you were in, and it actually makes you appreciate where you are now and how far you have come. And that again is something that women are attracted to, but not just women, but everybody, right? A big problem right now is a lot of men are only feel successful if they're successful with women or if they have friends, right? Because they have this biological need to want to be with somebody, obviously, but there's also status associated with it. We don't like being lonely. A lot of people pretend that they're introverted or awkward, but I guarantee if you found the right person, you would love being around somebody else, not necessarily every day, but at least on a weekly basis, okay? The issue that I have with people avoiding dating is that when you're unable to fix your dating problem, you can't necessarily solve other problems in the world, which is unfortunate, right? Because you're gonna be completely distracted on a weekly basis, daily basis, thinking about women and dating. Your body is telling you all the time, reproduce, be with women, have kids, build shelter, eat food, right? Like we have things our body tells us to do constantly. And after you eat food, drink water, have shelter and can protect yourself from others, the next step in life is to reproduce, be successful, right? You're watching this right now. I'm sure you want to have kids one day. I'm sure you want to start a family. I'm sure you want to contribute to the world but you're so distracted by your brain constantly telling you you need to date, you need to be with women, that you're unable to actually get to the things that you want to. 
the things that would help everybody else. Because in a way, you know, worrying about dating is kind of selfish. Obviously, you're going to contribute by reproducing and bringing kids into the world. But like, think about all the things that you could do if you had the dating problem solved. That's how you can truly unlock your real potential. And sure, you can find your purpose and unlock your potential in life without necessarily being successful dating. But guess what? I've worked with hundreds of men that were very successful. They made a bunch of money. They had a really good career. They started a business and they were crushing it. But they come to me because while they were doing all that, they didn't work on their social skills at all. They never understood dating. And now they're like late 20s, early 30s, sometimes later than that. And they're catching up for lost time. They have millions of dollars, but they're depressed. Isn't that ironic, right? Millions of dollars, all the things that you've ever wanted, but they're depressed and they're lonely. Now it's time for them to actually be like, you know what, I'm gonna work on this. So you can do it either way. You can worry about dating first. You can worry about being successful when it comes to making money and business, or you could do both at the same time. It doesn't need to be extreme like that. You don't need to spend 10 years in monk mode, never approaching women just to be a millionaire and then figure it out. But you also don't need to spend every waking hour of every waking day worrying about your women problems and putting off all the things that you actually wanna do, like turning your passion into a business or helping others or exercising or all that. There's literally a balance that you can reach where you can do both. But what I don't want you to do is continue to have a victim mentality. What I don't want you to do is get into a relationship just to fill a void inside of you. And I also don't want you to just focus entirely on making money or avoiding women or whatever and thinking one day I'll be able to worry about it. It's like, no, bro, you're gonna be so far behind everybody else that you're actually gonna be very vulnerable because there's lots of guys that become successful and now they're in their 30s and they're rich and life's good, but they don't have any experience with women. They haven't gone through the heartbreaks. They haven't gone through all this. So women are able to just completely manipulate them, bro, because they have no experience. They have no reference point. You're basically like a sheep in the wolf's den. They're gonna come in here and be like, wow, this guy doesn't know anything. I can just rip his life apart. And that ends up in divorce, that ends up in false allegations. I mean, it could go so bad in so many different ways, but you have these guys that have no experience and they're just like, oh my God, the first girl that actually talked to me, I love her, you know? I don't want you to be that either. So my solution, my suggestion is to find a group of people that motivate you, find some people that you can talk to. And if you are ready to actually become a socializer, get social skills, build social circles, approach women in real life, become attractive, charismatic, and have amazing interactions that lead you to going on dates and getting a girlfriend, then you can join my socializer community. You could talk to me each week, ask me questions. You have a hundred plus others in there that are also gonna be able to reply to you. You can become friends with them. We hold each other accountable. And we talk about stuff like this all the time. I know you probably don't have any friends that you can talk about this with, which is why you're watching this video. You're probably sitting here right now like, man, I would love to have a group of people I could talk to things like this about. I would love to have a group of people that could keep me motivated. And I would love to have a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to actually do this and get results, right? It makes total sense. And there's so many testimonials and stories on my website of guys that were in the same position as you, sometimes even worse positions than you, but they now have the results that they actually wanted. I know that it seems like it's a course about dating, but realistically, in order to be successful dating, you need to be successful, period. And when you become successful, everything in life becomes easy, right? There are ways for you to improve. I've laid them all out in this video. I believe in you. I know that nobody else does necessarily right now. I understand life is hard, but it's gonna get better if you let yourself do it. There is a successful version of you and there is a giant shadow on you right now, but you do have the potential to get out of this hole you're in. And yes, you can be successful with dating. All right, if you're interested in the socializer community, you can check the link in the description below. I also have a Discord with about 28,000 people that's free to join and you can go in there and talk to people as well. I want you to send this video to a friend too because you probably found this video because you were scrolling on YouTube randomly and you're like, you know what, I need some help. But if somebody sent this to you, like a good friend of yours was like, hey bro, check this video out, I guarantee you probably would have found it way sooner and you would have been able to actually make the changes that would make your life a lot better 
way sooner. And that's a win-win for everybody. Because when you can be yourself, when you can be the best version of yourself, you can bring the best out of everybody else as well. So please share this with a friend, send it to them, help your fellow brother out because you're not alone. When we work together, we can do anything. All right, I'll see you later.